actually are gluten and celiac disease. And what is then the impact of a gluten-free diet? Well, starting with the basics, gluten is a protein found in plants like wheat. Celiac disease is a specific condition relating to the small intestine. It's a fairly serious condition. It only affects about 1% of the population. The rest of the world is not seriously affected by gluten in the diet. But removing gluten from the diet can cause serious nutritional consequences. It is, of course, a little bit more complicated than that. That covers at least the basics. Now, for more details about gluten, it's actually found in grains which are related to grass. So this includes things like barley, wheat, oats and rye. It's bound to the starch in those grains. It's actually composed of two different proteins, gliadin and glutenin, which is where the name that relates to the word glue actually comes from. These proteins are actually responsible for most of the proteins you've actually consumed in flour-based products. They're needed to make bread rise and also give dough the strength and elasticity it needs. However, gluten isn't actually present in things like rice, corn, millet and potatoes. So there are actually alternatives to getting the needed protein into your diet. Now, celiac disease is actually what's known as an autoimmune disorder. It's basically where your body's actually fighting itself, producing a reaction normally intended to fight off invading bacteria, instead turning on healthy cells. In celiac disease, this is a genetic condition related to the small intestines, which means that certain populations are more likely to have celiac disease and others it's extremely rare. The body is actually reacting to the presence of gliadin in the food. The villi, which are in the small intestine, absorb most of this during digestion. And so these are the cells that are predominantly the ones attacked by the body's own T cells. Resultant damage to the villi then present problems for the body's normal digestion and operation. This can include things like weight loss, stomach pain, odd bowel movements, joint pain, skin rashes, anemia, and even infertility. The good news is that by removing the gliadin from the diet, this allows the villi to recover, and normal health can be restored. This does mean, however, that any subsequent consumption of gliadin will result in another attack on the villi. So the only way to lead a healthy life with celiac disease is to avoid all gluten in the diet. So, should we all go on a gluten-free diet just to be on the safe side? Well, not really, for several reasons. First, a gluten-free diet is actually quite a restrictive one. There are lots of nice foods out there which contain gluten. So you need to cut out virtually all of the breakfast cereals, crackers, cakes, bread, and even many processed foods have some gluten in them. In addition, gluten provides substantial amounts of proteins needed in many diets. And because the gluten is found in some of the most popular grains used in the human diet, it also lose the vitamin B, iron, zinc, magnesium and fibre also present in those grains, along with other essential nutrients. And these can be difficult to replace in an otherwise normal diet. So going gluten free just in case can actually make your health worse rather than better. The other point is that celiac disease is a serious medical condition which can clearly be identified by medical professionals. If you think you might have celiac disease, you need to contact a medical professional and find out. If you have it, you need to cut out gluten. If you don't have it, there's no real to need to bother to cut out gluten from your diet. But this brings us to another condition known as non-celiac gluten sensitivity. This is actually reported in about five times as many people as are actually diagnosed with celiac disease. But is it a real condition? Well, firstly, there is no actual damage to the villi or any other detectable signs normally associated with celiac disease. But that doesn't mean that nothing's happening, but also that the symptoms aren't necessarily related to gluten. In blind tests done uh, with supposedly gluten-free diets Patients reported reduced symptoms, no matter whether you're on the gluten-free diet or not. So instead, what's likely to be happening is an excess of certain types of carbohydrates in the diet, which draw water into the gut, and then begin a process of fermentation in the gut itself, and lead to the symptoms that people report. 
And these carbohydrates are actually present in wheat, but also present in other foods like lentils and mushrooms. So it might be possible to change your diet and tests to see if you, these symptoms persist, or alternatively cut down some of the carbohydrates in your diet and see if that works. So that's a bit on gluten. It's an important complex protein in the diet. One may also cause some serious medical problems.